hello, if you're watching this right now, it means that you need to know more about sponsorship on roosterteeth.com. Right, Blaine? Right, Barbara. Well, if you sign up, you could see Connected, which is our new documentary uh, about us losing technology for about five days. It's on the Rooster Teeth website. You get to see it amongst all of this other content we have available. You click right here to sign up for sponsorship. There's a free one month trial that you could sign up for. And if you don't like it, then, you know, just don't renew it. But you could try it out. Click right here. And you can also enjoy other premium content at roosterteeth.com. <laughs> Bye. <laughs>
<laughs> is uh, we we thought that that's I mean technically I looked it up. There are graphs that you can go look at. You two are millennials. Well, millennials is born... also a big gap. Yeah. Like that is I think people who were oh right born between is it 1980 and. It's like sometime in the like 80s, now? yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's it, like mid 80s to currently. So well, it's, it's like I think to early 2000s. I think after that, it's why or it's something. It's some bullshit. They're like different. Bilennials. Yeah, I mean, it's it's just a category. It's it's meaningless other than that it's just a helpful way so that I bet when you when you watch the words when you mm -hmm. saw the trailer you knew exactly what we were talking about. Yeah, and that was the point. We didn't want to say two twenty somethings. Right. Yeah. You know. So that's all that was. You couldn't have been my age. No. To make it easier. No. Couldn't have hard. been why. Two twenty-six years. Held on in the womb and was like, I'm not going. I'm not going. <laughs> okay, no. so um, I, I'm just going to go into the first question right here. Let's, Let's do, do it. it. From Athena Jean on Instagram. Let's get my character. Who do you think would have the hardest time reverting back to, the, to 80s tech? And what tech do you think it would be hardest to live without? I think by who do you think. Like within the company? Members? Let's let's go with who do you think at Rooster Teeth? I'm gonna do a little bit of interpretation there. Hmm. Well, at first I thought it'd be Blaine and I. Yeah. But I think we actually handled it pretty well. Um, I'd probably say Meg would have a difficult time. Um, you know, so much of her life and uh, stuff that she does is online, and she's on a lot. Um, probably the most of the company, if not one of the most. So, I th she'd probably have a hard time. I'd, I'd say probably, like, Chris Damaris. Um, not that he's, like, constantly, you know, like, oh, use, like, utilizing technology to its full extra, you know, but he's, like, he's so connected because, like, the dude's so freaking busy and, like, all of the things that he do could not be accomplished if it weren't for tech. Yeah. So, like, I mean, he's the head writer at Rooster Teeth and he's constantly having people talk to him and he's working on day five and stuff like that. They so. could fax him, walk it over. Oh, my God, but he would have such a difficult time. He'll walk time. it back. I don't think Chris would be able to function without You technology. know that that's there like were a, That's a better answer, actually, because Chris would just, like, break down. He would, like, fall over and just... But, like, his, his job has existed for... <laughs> like, the, there are production companies that existed Yeah, but the Chris has only existed. <laughs> <laughs> I would have said Gus. What about Gus? Gus is perfectly content just, like, at home with Esther. So I think they could entertain each other. He has his dogs. Yeah. I think as long as he had, like, some sort of television, he'd be okay. Yeah, he's very – yeah, okay. When I proposed this to him – because there were – when uh, when we were thinking about who to put through this, Yeah. Gus was on the list. I think Gus just has too much responsibility to go through this doc. No. Yeah. But I think if he wasn't in that situation, he'd be okay. Yeah. Do you guys think you could have lasted a month? If we did it for a month, I mean, with with the nature of our uh, with our jobs and stuff like that, like if Rooster Teeth had allowed something like that for, for that to happen, I think on a social level, Barbara and I would have been fine. Um, but I, there's no way that we could do what we do for work going a month without. I don't know. Do you think we could have lasted a month? Probably not. I think <laughs> we so? could have. Um, you would have. I think by then we would have been Jones in a bit, or like yeah, we would have felt very disconnected. Or maybe by then it would have just been like completely 180. Yeah, I think I, sometimes I, I question that because, like, maybe we just entered, like, the honeymoon period <laughs> as the documentary was coming to a close. And then, like, it would, like, who knows if shit would have hit the fan it's if like we had stayed on it longer. What's it called? Parabola? Ah, parabola. Yeah. Like, it sucks, it sucks, it sucks. Oh, it's getting okay, actually. Oh, it sucks, oh, it, God, sucks it's it sucks, terrible. Yeah. it sucks. Yeah, we, we thought about it. We thought about doing it for a month. Oh, my. I, I, Matt Hullum did not approve. Yeah. He was like, we're I too don't... important. Well, I, yeah, it would have been very hard for you to actually sustain doing your job without, especially, I think, especially you, yeah. not being able to look at Twitter when that is your job. But we'll get to that. More we'll than get, just We'll get to that later. Um, okay, but let's go to our next question. Let's. Yes. Let's see who I have here. This is from Bexmix. Mm, at Bexmix. Wait, that's Becca. Becca. Is that Becca? Yeah. Oh. Well, I didn't know that when I chose the Next. <laughs> So oh. this is from Twitter. How long did it take you to get used to cameras following you around? Were you all were you always self conscious? <laughs> yes, but I'm always self conscious even without the cameras following me around. Um, it was weird at first because I felt like I always had to be saying something or doing something interesting. Yeah. Because I was like, otherwise you're just gonna be wasting all this footage on me doing nothing. Um, so sometimes they would put a GoPro in our car to get us like on a journey somewhere. 
and I'd just be talking to the GoPro the whole time. And I'm like, you guys are probably not going to use any of this, but I feel the need to constantly be providing you with content. Um, so yeah, it took a while to get used to, though. You did ham it up sometimes. That's just me, though. I, well, that's what, so... I am not kosher at all. I am full-on ham. So, uh, I, I, I want you to answer the question, Blaine, although... Well, answer the question, then I... The, oh, about how I felt about yeah. the documentary crew? Um, I don't know. At first, it was kind of weird because there was, like, these strangers that I was inviting to my home. But then, like, over the time that the, the doc was being filmed, I got to know all the guys, like, super well. We and... messed with the, the audio guys so much. <laughs> oh, yeah, it was so much fun. We had, like, mics on a lot, and so we would just be, like, whispering things into our microphone, like, hey, just want you to know you're fucking idiot and you hate you. And, <laughs> and he'd be like just, hundreds of like yards away and be like. <laughs> I have pictures that, uh, yeah, I should have supplied those. We have, I, I'll post some uh, BTS pictures later yeah. uh, of you guys surrounded by the crew. But I should say um, is that we, for, for, for this documentary and uh, actually for our next one, we've partnered with a company called uh, Alpheus Media and uh, Matt Hames directed Connected. That's the worst. <laughs> worst, yeah. worst. I don't know. He's I don't know why we were keeping him around, <laughs> but uh, he's got a good team, and uh, we, you know, we're we're still trying to keep it in house, but we needed some documentary experience, and he brought that to the table, and just I, I was there a lot just to try to make you too comfortable and make sure you were cool with the uh, five strangers in your home. They were yeah, all really cool. Yeah, you had the opposite impact. You made me very uncomfortable, Daniel. Yeah, yeah. as you usually I do. I do that. Yeah, I just talk to HR. <laughs> This. No, it was it was a lot of fun. I think uh, all of us bonded by the end of the the whole experience. It was really cool. Yeah. So that's yeah. Well, and I I feel like that tends to happen when you're like in that yeah. close quarters. Yeah, it's called Stockholm thing. syndrome. Um, <laughs> it happens sometimes. Okay. Next question comes from Kisa Twelve Roman numerals Twelve. Mm. So I could say X one one, but I think that's wrong. You could. Twitter, this is from Twitter. Uh, what was the hardest old piece of tech to learn to use? Beeper. Beeper. <laughs> because, I don't know about you, Blaine, yeah. I never ever had a beeper or used a beeper in my entire life. And I knew like the basic functions, I guess, of like someone calls a number and then they leave a number and that's what you get. Mm -hmm. So they could put like 8008, which would say boob. Um, or they could leave like a phone number for you to call. But I still didn't get it, and I was like, how do I send a message back? How do I respond to this? And everyone's like, you can't, it's a pager. The idea of one-way communication made zero sense to me. Yeah. I was like, what is that? So did people play pranks on you? Yes. Oh, all the time. I mean, not to just through the beepers, but like through our answering machines as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like, I mean, both of us with Gus. Yeah, Gus called me um, while I was at work, I guess. And he left me three messages, two of which were just songs that he had played which were apparently like the number one song the year I was born. Yep. Could not hear it at all. Bad answering machine. <laughs> and then the other message he left me was, hey, Barbara, I just wanted to let you know that uh, you did a really bad job today and no one likes you. But if you disagree with me or think any of that's wrong, just feel free to give me a text or an email. All right, bye. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, you piece of shit. You filmed that, right? I did. Yeah, we, we'll, we'll probably post that at some point. Yeah, you know, cool. I think we filmed a lot of our answer machine things. Gus did the same thing with me, though, and I, I, I talked to Barbara about this, and we had a, this similar experience, which is weird, because we never talked to each other about it, but every time we, we listened to the answering machine, we listened to the entire message because we were afraid something important was going to be at the end of it. Or like someone would say something. So when Gus was playing these like three-minute, four-minute-long <laughs> song messages, we were just like... Listening, yeah, I'm like, <laughs> like maybe, waiting. Maybe something will happen at the end of this, and then like another one start playing. I'm like, maybe God they meant to it. say it on this one. Yeah. How, did, how did you deal without the uh, the cell phone and the uh, you have to use the landline? Um, you had a hamburger phone. A hamburger phone. That thing was loud. I didn't know how loud it was until I saw the documentary, and that thing is like, <laughs> yeah. Sorry. Yeah, that thing was loud. <laughs> uh, how did I handle it? I mean, it sucked. There was like so many times where I needed to call somebody while I was out and about, and I was like, what do I? What do I freaking do? Like at one point, I was at Chipotle, and luckily everybody at Chipotle knows me. So I went in and asked <laughs> to use their phone, and they're cool enough to let me use it. But it's like I had to like rely on strangers or finding landlines that are actually like it's pretty difficult to find. Like yeah, only until recently did the Rooster Teeth actually I think get landlines in a lot of the offices. But I guess you you never did you ever ask to use somebody's cell phone? No. No, that wasn't allowed. I felt like that was cheating. Oh no. right, right, right. That's right. Yeah. I, I totally looked over. There, There's even moments where I was like wanting to be like, "Hey, can you text somebody?" And then I was like, "That's that's cheating too." Yeah. So. Yeah. Yeah. Fair enough. Well, actually, we have a clip of Blaine. Uh, is that? I hope that's ready. Um, 
of you calling Colton because you couldn't count your calories that week. Oh, yeah, that was a challenge that he had. That was a challenge that, that, that we mentioned. cut from the documentary. Yeah. Uh, but we still, like, we still have beats of that throughout. He was obsessed with that, too, the whole time. He's yeah. Like, yeah, let's watch this clip that uh, of Blaine calling Colton. So I just got back from the gym, and since I'm counting my calories, but I don't know what craft services is going to be serving tomorrow because it's most likely going to be breakfast tacos or, you know, what have you, I'm going to ask Colton to to uh, make sure that he gets the caloric the calorie information. So I'm calling him right now. His number. I forgot to mention it is like about midnight, and call time's in about five hours. Oh, he didn't answer. Hello? Colton, this is Blaine. Hey, buddy. Oh, I woke you up. Hey, can you make sure that you get the calorie information for craft services tomorrow? Or you can ask the, the PA. Sorry to wake you up. I just got back from the gym. All right. Go back to sleep. I'll see you in about five hours. Good night, sweet prince. I feel really bad. Oh, another call. Hello? Hello? <laughs> I don't know what that was. <laughs> that was. That was the call that you were on before, calling uh, you back. Wow. Oh. See, that, that, I thought that was really funny because how would you normally ask Colton to do something for you at midnight? I text him, yeah. You text him. Yeah. It's funny because I, I showed up the next day at set. And I was like, did you get the calorie information? And he's like, uh, I thought that was a dream. And I was like, no, <laughs> like, I called you. He's like, oh, I'm sorry. So uh, next question comes from Jessica Johnston on Facebook. <laughs> Jessica. Have your habits with technology changed since the experiment? For example, do you keep your phone away during group gatherings? More, question mark. Uh, I try to, but it's one of those things where when someone else is on their phone, I feel like, oh, I should check my phone. And that I think is, at first I was more conscious of it, but now it's like, it's just a habit and it's hard to break that with only like a, a week or so of being without it. So just more conscious of it, but I still take it out when I'm with groups. I'd, yeah, I'd have to agree. I mean like way more conscious of it. I'm still not like completely broken of it. Like I'll carry it with me and stuff like that. But I, I wouldn't say, I think it's far less of a problem now than it was before. Like, what about I'm, at meals? At meals, mm -hmm. I mean, I, I am a bachelor. I eat alone, so that's not really an issue for me. But if I'm out with friends, with people, right? I think... We do have lots of footage of you eating alone without a phone. Mm -hmm. And I thought it was hilarious just to watch you, like... Yeah. Because it's just so interesting, though, because you could, like, strike up a conversation with somebody next to you who's also At eating alone. At the table alone. next to you? Well, or no, I just got... I just you got... like that mac and cheese? Yeah, it's pretty good, right? Yeah. You could make a connection. Craft <laughs> your Velveeta. Uh huh Cool. <laughs> I just, I or I, I just got uh I just got back from flying on 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 the plane mm -hmm. and like everybody's just on their phone when you could just easily talk to the person next to you. Yeah, and but then up. you're gonna be that guy who's like, when the person gets home, they're like, man, this guy on the flight was like blah blah blah, chatty Cathy. How about here. this weather, right? Ha. Huh. You think that guy existed in 1960 without uh, these uh, cell phones? How about that local sports team? Huh? <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of. Uh, Social situations. Uh -huh. I have another clip of Blaine at the doctor's office. Why just me? Another Blaine clip. <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll get to Barbara. Roll the footage. <laughs> Roll the footage. So I'm in the doctor's office. Normally, while waiting, I would be having my cell phone out and I'd be on Twitter or Tinder or even Tumblr. But I have none of the errs. So I'm just sitting here. But lo and behold, they have a little coloring book. So, I'm going to get my art game on, because I'm really fucking bored. Good news, doctor said I'm fine. I'm just going to get a Z-Pack, I think, to help with um, perhaps bronchitis. Also good news, I beat this thing in fucking no time. Come at me! <laughs> I like how your definition of coloring is doing a crossword puzzle with a colored. <laughs> it was gonna start with I was gonna I was gonna draw something, but I didn't want people to judge me on my art skills. So you could have colored in that little girl. 
I did. Did you? Roll it back. I think I did. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, moving on to the next question. Next clip of Blade, roll it. <laughs> this is from Twitter. Uh, okay, so what is the actual most valuable lesson you learned through this process? I already get my answer. Barbara, go. The most valuable lesson. Just that there needs to be a balance. I don't think that we're trying to say that technology is the devil or that we should try to eliminate it from our lives, but we need to be more conscious of the world around us and the people around us. It's just about balance. Yeah, you can entertain yourself. You can go watch YouTube videos and stuff like that. And definitely, That's fine. Like, yeah, I mean, I think technology is amazing for entertainment, communication, keeping in touch with people who you usually wouldn't keep in touch with. For sure. Over time, especially as you grow older and like lose connections with people. We also have a badass community that you can interact yeah. with. And so it's just about balance. Yeah. Well, and that was one thing that I remember uh, the director, Matt Hames, like we locked into pretty early on with you, Barbara, was how I, I think it was in your first interview where you actually like he texted me because I, I couldn't be there. I was I had to be somewhere else. Right. And he texted me and was like, Barbara's making us cry because of how you talked about the, the Rooster Teeth community and how connected you are to it yeah. and that you have to give that up. Well, I, I've spent almost half my life with Rooster Teeth and the community. And like the majority of that was as part of the community and on the website and like that was my second family growing up. And now that I'm like managing the community, I only feel closer to them and like I wanna protect them and always communicate with them and show that the, we value them. So it's like, yeah, it's like a really strong bond, I feel. They're my little babies. I'm, I'm their mama. Your little millennial babies. My little millennial babies. Hey. Some aren't millennials though. That is true. Next question. I should, okay, I'm gonna ask this question. I'm, I'm gonna scan for a question that I really <coughs> wanna ask. We'll see if the community has asked it. Mm -hmm. But first, we'll go to Bloody Penguin. Great name. From Twitter. Uh, did either of you notice yourself sleeping better when you didn't have your phone or laptop in bed? I think that's pretty interesting. Went to bed earlier, no, not much. Um, but, it's, but there was some stressfulness though. Not having my phone and knowing that something could happen at any moment and I would be completely unaware of it. Or the ancient alarm clock that they provided me not working, yeah. which it fucking broke on me several times. Uh, that was like kind of stressful. I ended up like setting like three different alarms. Like my beeper had an alarm, my clock, my watch had an alarm. So I was setting all these alarms just to. Yeah, just back usually your phone just does it for you. Yeah. Right. You, like snooze or whatever. I do that when I have to get up for like a plane flight. I actually found it more challenging in the Set morning. Alarms. Um, because I'm so used to getting up probably like an hour, hour and a half before I have to leave just to like wake up and get ready. Mm. And I'm always either listening to a podcast or listening to like the radio or something, which I could do, but it was that awkward thing of like, I have nothing to like listen to, to occupy my time with as I get ready. And I felt like, I guess I'll just leave. They gave me like a big boom box, which I had to go buy some diesel batteries for, but uh, I listened to that while I was getting ready in the morning. That was like actually nice. Because of that, I bought like a radio to play, just to have like music in my house. I saw some comments that they appreciated. Uh, we had a conversation about your Spotify use, mm -hmm. like the day before the doc was happening. And I feel bad because I even mentioned, I was like, I'm pretty sure I was talking to Daniel, like I credited you and then they cut it out, or I guess. Well, no, because who cares? No one knows who Daniel I is. I care though, because it's like, I yeah. came up now with this like. Now they do. It was like I hey. came up with this groundbreaking, you know, thing, but that, that conversation stuck with me, and I think yeah. it wasn't until the thing actually started, and I was like listening, and I was like, oh yeah, is this is So the conversation oh, for reference is the fact that uh, a lot of people these days, because they have such, it, music is so easily accessible, they put it on shuffle, and you're just getting a mix of different things. Mm -hmm. And I pointed out to Blaine, it, I asked him, do you ever listen to like albums? Because yeah. that is the artist's work, and you can pin pinpoint people's best albums, and you had not really thought about that before, at yeah. least and not too intensively. I think it actually started as a fight. Uh, we were talking about like Pink Floyd or Led Zeppelin, and, and you're like, what album is that? And it was like, I, I don't do albums, I don't, I don't know. And you're like, you were so shocked by this. And oh, I was quizzing you, that's right. Yeah, <laughs> and then I, and then like after that, like I started listening to like cassette tapes, you know, and I was like, oh, okay, yeah, Daniel's actually kind of right, and it's an enjoyable experience. I yeah, I grew up listening to, There's to me walking yeah, like a there duck you go. into. After I grew sports. up listening to to albums and just like can tell you what my favorite Michael Jackson album is, best Led Zeppelin, best The Who, like, and just because I can. I think the only thing stuff. I could do that with is like Spice Girls. 
You do love There's your... wannabe. <laughs> Speaking of which, although that's, I guess that's 90s, right? Yeah. Spice Girls. But I, 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 have, a, I have a clip of Barbara, but as a segue, what was your favorite <laughs> piece of um, 80s tech that you favorite received? Piece? Oh, probably my Walkman. I took that to the gym and I dropped it like a, several times, but it still worked. But my mm-hmm. Walkman was fucking rad. Favorite piece? Bought a bunch of cassette tapes. Uh, I really like the fanny pack. <laughs> you guys gave me a fanny pack, and I know it's not tech technically, but um... speaking of the fanny pack, so I wasn't allowed to show this before we started advertising the the doc because uh-huh. it was it was just kind of it was you being a little bit goofy and in character, but uh, I want to show character. it now, and I don't oh. have it. I didn't add it with music. I don't have it with music. It's just the raw VHS tape. <laughs> Blaine directing Barbara <laughs> as she explains the tech cleanse. Just yes. like Blaine did, Barbara did her own video. I did. Yeah. I never saw the light of day until now. Roll the VHS tape. Let's go. Okay. Ready? Yeah. Let's Going. Go jugs. <laughs> <laughs> I'll just have a little be quiet. And. What's up, jugs? It's Barbara. And right now, it is February 2016. And Blaine and I, who's filming, are doing this experiment where we have all of our technology taken away from us and we're only given technology from 1989 or before. So I uh, got my beeper, I have my film camera in my fanny pack, which was very popular at that time, and we're trying to get by and figure out how to do shit and live our lives without technology. It's crazy, man! Yo, what? How do we get by? We'll find out! Peace. <laughs> <laughs> Why didn't you know you didn't use that? It was great. <laughs> no, this is good. We might still use that. I kept on like moving. Every time I filmed, I made it like intentionally shit. That's Cause what I like, wanted. Because I feel like that's what my dad would do. And I had okay. Oh, I had a moment where I think I changed my my answer. My favorite tech wasn't my Walkman. It was that camera because it was the exact same model camera that my parents used to use. They have some B-roll that they can play while you're. Oh, I'd love to see it. Yeah. yeah, you filmed a lot with that camera. Yeah, it was an like, RCA we given, camera. We were given little handy cams just to film like our confessionals at night and stuff, and yeah. like when the documentary crew wasn't around, if we caught anything. So, like, I had some people ask me, like, "What were you filming on? Like, you didn't have a phone." That's or true. That was the one thing we allowed you to have was that yeah. little. But handy that, cam. like, there was nothing to it. It was just like record, stop, yeah. record. So, yeah. Blaine, I guess, filmed. Us. There's a, a lot more to this that I have to go through, and we'll potentially uh, release. But um, this is... Wait, no, we need to hear this with audio. This is the best part. <laughs> oh, yeah, I, you should play it back with audio. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, that yeah, that play RCA, that clip. Play that RCA that camo was awesome. Yeah. With audio. Yeah. Getting a phone call. I made it to Barbara's house. Hello? Turn off the fucking Oh, hey, how's it going? Where are you going, Aaron? Where, where do you... I can't see... Oh, that's your ass. <laughs> Aaron. <laughs> Wait, what is the dinner clip? We had a dinner clip where we were all acting fucking weird. I didn't have... Yeah, because that night we didn't have the doc crew with us, so we were just acting like so messed up all night. <laughs> like at one point we were eating, and I was like, this is delicious food! And then I look over to Aaron, and he's like... <laughs> like, we're just... Well... So weird. I only had so much time, so we'll we'll be we'll be uh, sponsors when we get get a little bit more content. Hey. Awesome. Yeah. So I mean, we're gonna <laughs> we're gonna dig through the connected archives and try to pull up some of the stuff that didn't make it into the doc because it was you know it didn't feed the story or whatever. You know, well, you also, still have to make a product. Five days of filming and forty five minutes of a cut documentary. You're I, gonna miss some stuff. I have a question for you. Okay. How long of a cut could you've made connected? Just out of curiosity. Like wow. And why 45 minutes? Your wish list of stuff you would have put in. We could have... Mm, you think we could have done feature length? I actually think... So. No. No? I don't think we had enough. If we wanted to do feature length, it would have had to be 30 days. And we knew that from the get-go. Yeah. Um, I, we were originally aiming for about 35 minutes. Um, but Matt was just wanting to put more stuff. And you guys going through the journey is really important. And so to, like, go through every single day was kind of, like, critical. Well, I have to say, know? like, everything that was in the documentary, nothing felt like, oh, this could have been taken out. Like, it all feels like it was a very cohesive end product. No. So good job. Yes. Five. To millennials. <laughs> millennials. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just going to keep doing that. Mm. Okay. So I have a, I have a, um, 
a question from Twitter. This is actually, we can talk a little bit more about the production side of things. This is from Rob Lee Bob. <laughs> Was the podcast scripted that the idea for Connected started from? Was the podcast scripted? Oh, like when Blaine and I were on like the couple days before it started? Yeah. Mm -hmm. It wasn't scripted, but we knew that we were going to be filming this documentary. Blaine and I really didn't know anything about the doc other than we were going to have our tech taken away from us. We didn't know we'd get challenges for it. We didn't know we'd get provided technology from the 80s. None of it. So um, no, it wasn't scripted, but we were aware we were going to start it. The only prompt that we had for that was segment Gus. was Gus. Yeah. yeah. We just said, Gus, we want you to ask them this question or these qu like one or two questions and see how they respond. We didn't know what you were going to say. And Gus just kind of, you And know. it also naturally fit into the podcast because we were talking about the amazing race and Bernie's right. whole phone thing. So yeah. natural segue is Gus is so great with doing. Yeah. And that said, um, I have a question. What was your favorite or least favorite task that you were in? And like you guys didn't know you were going to get tasks leading up to the doc. Were you nervous? Because you were freaking out. Yeah, I hate Barbara every time you guys totally gave me an envelope. Out. I was like, what the fuck do I have to do now? Yeah, <laughs> same. Because I thought it was just going to be like, oh, you just do five days of your life without tech. So I was prepared to, like, I had books, and I was, like, ready to, like, occupy my time during this whole thing. And then you're like, no, you have to do all this shit. Well, but it wouldn't be, A, it wouldn't be funny. No, I know. I, in <laughs> hindsight, I realized that, though, which is why I'm like, I hope this is an entertaining thing. Um... That's what we're striving to do with uh, RT Docs. Is like you're gonna you're gonna learn something. Maybe yeah. it's gonna have it's gonna explore something. But hopefully you have fun. Mm. Fun. And it the people fun. doing it are funny. You know, you two are funny. Well, Barbara is. So you know that that that's that's kind of what we're going for. So anyway, what was your what was your least favorite or favorite task? My least favorite task was having to uh, promote the documentary. I believe the exact uh. wording of the task was. Uh, Yesterday, Blaine made a video uh, about the documentary. You have to tell hundreds of people about it now. And I was like, how the <laughs> fuck do I do this? And I was like, am I going to have to go out in public and like scream at people? There you are. And then you guys handed me a microphone or a megaphone, sorry. And I was like, shit, I, this is so embarrassing. Um, I, I don't want to necessarily take credit for that because this was very much a group effort. Yeah. But I may have come up with that one. <laughs> you did, you sadistic prick. I actually, <laughs> I had a lot of fun with that. And I think uh, had one of us just done it on our own, it would have been terrifying. I also don't think it would have been as entertaining if it was just me. Yeah, I like to like back and forth. You would have been cowering in a corner. <laughs> I, I mean, I would have done it because like I tend to just like buck up and do shit that I need to do and like worry about my fears and insecurities later. Mm -hmm. Um, but having Blaine there definitely helped, and like it was someone I could play off of, and like who was in the situation with me that I could like relate to. But yeah, that sucked having to bother people. I hate doing that. Yeah. I would have been interested to see you do it alone. We oh. should we should go connected should, part two. <laughs> we'll, we should go do a little little RT life, and uh, yeah. have you go do it again. Um, <laughs> I think uh, I think my least favorite challenge was was like my overall one, which was like to find a date. Um, by like Friday or Saturday or something like that. Um, and you were given that on the first day, right? Yeah, and oh God, it was just, it was such a nightmare. And then I decided to go downtown and like, you know, talk to girls that way. And it was just like, it was, yeah, it was not a fun experience. It was like, it was a funny experience sure. for everybody watching. But for me, I was just like, it was like in my nightmare. So I got really drunk and I just started just talking to basically everybody and I was like, fuck it. Um, I'll make it as interesting as I could. I should have brought a wig with me and I could pretend it to be another girl. And be like, <laughs> yes, I'll go on a date with you, Blaine. <laughs> if it makes you feel better, Blaine, you got more numbers than I usually get. <laughs> trying to go out to the bar. Yeah, at a certain point, I just realized, like, just I'm... Just have a camera crew follow you. Yeah, there you go. Well, that actually helps us, like, I... a pickup line. Yeah. That's Bethany, by the way. I would never hit on her. She works here. She's like my sister. Gross. <laughs> um, you did. You took a. She was cute, but she had a, a boyfriend. She she also works here. <laughs> um, but no, it, like at a certain point, I just like realized that there was no way that I was gonna find a date. So I just started asking people for their numbers just to see like how many can rack up and yeah. How many times you can fail? I love what Aaron said. Is that like Blaine's gonna ask a hundred girls and one of them will say yes? I love you, Blaine. <laughs> it's just like the way he phrased that. Was so great. <laughs> it's a good math. Okay, uh, if you have any more questions, please tweet us at 
Hashtag connected doc. Uh, I am taking live tweets. This one from um, Eric TNAF, which let me go here. This is from Twitter. Um, oh, we've kind of covered this. Everyone's favorite memory from the whole experience. Mm. Not the task. We've already kind of gone favorite over the task. Favorite memory? Yeah, I, I had to say Maybe dinner. Maybe something we didn't see. Dinner slash game night at Barbara's was like the most fun that I've had. That was a lot of fun. It was just it was just you, me, Aaron, and Chris. But we played like Jenga and we played like what? Shut up and jam two. Somebody we have footage it. of we have a clip of uh, Chris and Blaine. Well, Chris trying to figure out the Sega Genesis. We can yeah. roll that. Do we? Sure. Let's see. Yeah. yeah. It, Give, give Peyton a second. As they... Sonic on the Sega Genesis. On the Sega Genesis. Let's Look at it. that. You changed the input on this thing. Welcome to the 80s. Uh, uh -huh. Uh -huh. Okay. Oh. Oh, wait, do I have to turn? Is the console on? It's on. Is it powered? Yeah. Mm. See those. Hey! There it is. Yeah. Zone one. Look, it's a big screen. Oh man, look at that. Oh. Play two players. Yeah. You're getting all the good shit. Also, in these clips, it's like you guys playing video games and drinking beer while I'm in an apron, like cooking. <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> you boys! So when, oh, we figured, so when we take away technology, everybody just reverts to the 1950s. It's, true, it's yeah. socially as well. It's like, you boys keep it down over there. <laughs> oh, man. I slaved over this hot stove for hours. <laughs> Real keep <cool>. it down. <laughs> just throwing shots. <laughs> but that was fun. We like played Jenga and yeah. It was so a fun, fun night. Um, yeah, I think that was one of my favorite moments. Also, uh, getting to go to the falls on that last day was nice. Oh, yeah. Nice and relaxing. And roller skating, too, with all of our friends was nice. Roller skating was fun. I say all of our friends. A small portion of our friends. <laughs> Two of our friends. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, awesome. Yeah. Uh, I, I have a question here from Pyrotechnic from Twitter. That's a nice name. That's an awesome name. Uh, Barbara, when you went to the library to get the recipe, couldn't you have used a photo photocopier, or was that a limitation? Uh, You're like, fuck. <laughs> yeah, that was my reaction internally, uh, just now. <laughs> I'm gonna sound real stupid when I say this right now. I don't go to libraries very often. The last time I've been to a library was when I was in college, and it was just to go there to study. Did not know they had a photocopier there. <laughs> so... <laughs> <laughs> Someone's laughing their ass off. Also, it took me like a fucking hour to write down that recipe. There were so many steps and so many ingredients. And it's just like, damn it. It was a delicious. I, I, yes, I could have done it, and I didn't do it. Yeah. So. I liked that one. I like that uh, that little, that I call that section like the Ferris Bueller section. Oh, yeah. Because if you, if you watch them going to the museum. I like how you like got it, that clip of me going, eggplant. <laughs> 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 I fucking hate eggplant. <laughs> It's good stuff. Yeah. It um, was very much like that museum section. Yeah. It, yeah. I, I remember seeing that and telling that to, to the guys and gals um, over at Alpheus. So, another question from Twitter. This comes from Triant Do. Trey Ant Do. I don't know how to read. We should make a Twitter compilation things. of you trying to read people's Twitter. Names. We could at Skidoo. one point put me on more live streams. <laughs> we'll, we'll get there. Skidoo. What is the one thing that the audience seemed to love that surprised you guys? Seemed to love that surprised you guys. Yeah, the reaction. Huh. I just think the overall reaction surprised me. Like, of just how much people were like, uh, this makes me want to do this tech lens. It makes me want to put down my phone and like go on a, an adventure for the next couple of days or like next time I have a break in school I'm gonna leave my phone at home and go somewhere. So that surprised me because I know our audience is very much like us where they're very involved in technology and to see people have that kind of reaction from it and that takeaway from it was very surprising. Um, people got a kick out of me having a little black book which <laughs> I think there's like some sort of implication behind having black books or something like I don't know what if that's like a cultural it's thing or not. An, I, it's like an old school thing where people would have a black book of every girl's number that they 
Oh. Well, then I probably didn't help because, like, I recently bought, like, another, like, a bigger black book. That was something that I actually, like, picked up bigger, to. Bigger, blacker book? Was to uh, take notes and stuff like that. Like, having an actual, like, pen and paper on me at all times. There's just something about writing something and physically checking off on a to-do list. You just got a notebook. Yeah. For, like, a bigger notebook. Yeah. It's, Yeah. But like people are like, please go to black book. Ah! And I was like, what does it mean? I, I like I like sometimes starting scripts with a yellow legal pad, and you just like I write love down legal pads. Yeah, you just write down all your ideas. It's yeah. a mess. What were and you, you most sort it. surprised with from the reaction of the yeah Daniel? Doc. Um, damn Daniel. I knew they were gonna love it. No. Oh. Uh, huh. That's a good question. I think I mean they. I was actually, I guess because of the the trailer response. Mm-hmm. And how they responded to millennials, I was, I was like, I was a little worried. Oh right, you did that on purpose. No. Yep. Yeah. But, um, I think it was, I, it was actually how quickly. Nice, Blaine. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I need napkins. <laughs> we're we're at the we're almost at the end of the show here. Mom, <laughs> way to pop the cork. Not that they're. Well. And I was I was uh, really surprised by how Blaine sucks at drinking beer. <laughs> I'm not surprised. No, but how quickly um, people actually like got to the end and really like I, I actually I think like the last three minutes of the doc where they where you do kind of go over how you feel yeah. and everybody connecting with that moment like that to me was like the best part. Yeah. Did you say they are connected? Um, actually, I think of another another one that I was surprised by was like people after seeing me out at the bar, they're like, "Oh, Blaine's a pimp," and I was like, "I'm not." A pimp. <laughs> I went out and just fucking failed on camera, trying to pick up girls. Blaine is definitely not a pimp. No, this is a great way to top off this podcast. To <laughs> I'm gonna throw this off camera for now. There's another question. Yes. Let's hear. This it. might be a good. We've got a few minutes left. This is from <laughs> Tom O'Neill, fifty-eight, from Twitter. He asked, "Would you would you have considered doing episodes, or would you do episodes?" That's more of a Daniel question. I think I think. That's more of a production you question. That is more of a yeah. of a production question. Well, you guys can answer too of how much um how much you'd uh oh that's a good question too. I need to add that. Um, I I I would say no. We're we're doing a series of docs. The, the, I wanted to touch upon that a little bit, like. This year we have slated to do four, and they're all going to be kind of. Yeah, this is the first of our four that we're doing this year, and um, we we have an exciting. (laughs) Our next one's going to be really exciting and a little bit bigger. We're going outside of Austin for parts of it, and um, and it's going to be really great. But we're we're trying to do. They might be thematically similar or like deal with technology and the internet, but. You know, we're still figuring that out. But as far as episodes, like smaller episodes, mm-hmm. not at the moment. Yeah. You never know in the future. Yeah. I you think know? it lends itself better for, like, full-length things. Yeah. yeah. I, I like having seen the entire process play out in one big digestible yeah. clip instead of, like, oh, I'm going to tune in next week. You people know? always kind of lose interest if you break them up like that. Whereas yeah. this, yeah. it's like, it's a continuous thing. I think this was also, like, a more, uh, I don't know, thoughtful, you know, kind of, like, something that consumed as a whole was nicer, you know? You, you saw it from beginning to end. And... Well, we also tried really hard. I feel like with episodes, it might feel like a reality show. And, like, we... we this was a little bit... God, Blaine, you're smooth. You sh- <laughs> they, uh... We, uh, we, we wanted to steer clear of making it uh, too much of a reality show. The closest we got, I think, is by giving you tasks, right? Yeah. Because that, that's the filmmakers kind of messing with you. But we're also trying to make a point. Yeah. And uh, the later documentaries might not do that at all. It's just like, hey, we're going here. Let's it's see what happens. Follow you around. Yeah, follow you around, you know, or go investigate this. So Blaine and Barbara are going to their offices at Rooster Teeth Productions. What could go wrong? What happens next? <laughs> Yeah, I'm glad that we don't buy into that silly bullshit. Like, we just it felt like a really natural, <laughs> fun documentary. Someone asked um, a self-pleasuring question. <laughs> I think I've lost it. Like, is that how we they, occupy they, our time? They asked basically, like, did you re- like did you refrain? <laughs> like, did you lose the ability because you didn't have access to porn unless you went to a shop, which almost thought about making one of you go into a porn shop. 
like a magazine. <laughs> Skip well, the camera off of me. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I thought that was funny. Um, you guys didn't take away all our tech. That's all I'll say. Oh! <laughs> oh, Barbara, go <come> on! <laughs> <laughs> I guess Kachorin got it like a little bit later. late. A little bit late. Yeah, I, mean, I may or may not have, you know, <laughs> whatever. Got to release the hounds. Yeah, I should I should tell the, you about the, that. But the battery the powered performance. hounds. I don't know. Never. Great. I'm happy for both of you. <laughs> I'm not gonna get into that. Uh, great way to end the stream. That's a great way to end the stream. Um, yeah, I don't know. Do you, do you two have any uh, last comments or lasting feelings that you want to share with our just, sponsors? It was just a great experience, and um, I think if anyone is thinking like, oh, part of this was scripted or planned out, it's like, no, this is, everything was really genuine. This is how it happened. We didn't know what was going to happen or what we were supposed to do or say at any moment. So, like, it was all completely 100% real. Yeah. And anybody who thinks otherwise, like, they're just... Cray cray. Yeah. Um, I, I think final thoughts on the whole thing is I hope people enjoy it, watch it, like it, stuff like that. But I think the, the main takeaway is just, you know, kind of realizing what, you know, the big problem is. You know, like the fact that technology is, like, scary. I mean, it's like people are consumed by it, you know. It's, it's ruining people's relationships and friendships or, you know, it's completely changing society. And I think sometimes for the worse. Um, so I just I hope people realize the benefits in technology, but also they try to like focus on some of the old-fashioned ways of communicating with people and like I don't know it's I, the the biggest the, the the thing that I liked about having this talk out was with people tweeting me and being like I I decided to go for a hike without my phone today and I was like that's really fucking cool yeah someone also said that they saw the roller skating scene in the dock and mm -hmm. they're like after I saw that I put my phone down and I went rollerblading with my friends. Yeah, and or, I haven't done that in years. And there was like somebody else that was like, I, I invited my friends over for a game night and I didn't touch my phone once. I was like, that's yeah. really, really cool. So I hope people have, you know, they, they take that away from the doctor. Real life takeaways. And also we should mention, if you're watching this on YouTube, uh, comes out on Thursday for uh, non-sponsors on YouTube, there's a free 30-day trial you could sign up if you want sponsorship. You don't have to keep renewing after that 30 days. You could just try the trial and if you don't like it, then you could cancel. But you could see the doc, and then we'll be also releasing more clips from it eventually mm -hmm. for sponsors, and yeah. then yep. more RT docs in the future, which will be sponsor only. Yep. Yeah. If you watch, if you watch this or Let's Play Live, there will just be more like it. More of it. Yeah. Swag. It's swag. <laughs> Great. Well, thank you all for joining us, and uh, have a good night. Bye. Thank you. Ha.